Welcome to our webinar, Thinking of Application Performance Management, Don't Do It, Find Out More. My name is Mike Zuckerman. I'm NOAA Software's Chief Marketing Officer, and I'm going to run the webinar session today. Thank you first to our international audience. We have global attendees from around the world, from Asia, from Europe, from, from Africa, from uh, Russia, uh, and uh, really do appreciate that you're taking time out of your local time zone. Some of you are up in the middle of the night to attend this webinar, so we do appreciate it and welcome you today. It's as much about thinking of APM don't do it as it really is about don't do it wrong, do it right. There are many problems associated with APM deployment and we're going to share some view of best practice and how to resolve these issues. And maybe, maybe don't do it first. There are new technologies that change the game and may drive greater return on investment for your organization. We'll have a brief demo and we'll certainly answer questions. Uh, please send them to mzuckerman at noaa.com and we'll respond to them uh, separately and offline or live during the session as possible. Our agenda will focus a brief introduction on NOAA, the state of the APM market, APM pitfalls, best practice from leading companies, new opportunities, uh, specifically focused on things like user experience management and performance management for the users, and really bring it to full circle with a demonstration. NOAA is a leader in user experience management. We have licensed our technology to 20% of the Fortune 50 and hundreds of global 5,000 customers. And these customers buy our technology because it delivers compelling value for them. Almost none of these customers woke up one morning and said, look, we have a budget for user experience management. Uh, they created budgets by building a value proposition and a business case and use that strong return on investment to bring the technology into the company. The APM market per se is far more developed and so today people wake up and say I have a budget for an APM tool but 10 years ago APM was in the same place as the UEM segment and that's just a normal evolution. So today most of our customers have been driven by business case and found ROI that made it very compelling to acquire the technology. We sell the product globally through SAP, and SAP sells it as SAP User Experience Management Application by NOAA. Uh, SAP is an outstanding partner and a tremendously effective channel for us, and they have a compelling vision that they've wrapped around the product to bring it to market. Uh, we also support direct sales of the product for market segments like Siebel in the Oracle space. Many active partnerships. Uh, some of those partners are on the conference today or work with you directly. And NOAA has been uh, around for many years, founded in 2003, and has really established our leadership over time uh, by building out the technology set and working with our customers to understand the best approach to the market. The APM market today really has become a legacy market. There are $2 billion in annual sales and thousands of companies globally that implement the technology. There are four basic core components to APM, depending on the different analysts that you talk with. And some analysts, a very few, bundle user experience management into their suite for application performance management. And most analysts keep it as a separate space because it starts to cross into a very different value proposition. And it starts to bridge the gap to things like user performance management. So we'll talk more about that. From an architectural perspective, trends to the cloud are causing disruption. Classic APM tools do not bridge to the cloud. The cloud requires, most of the time, an agent-based technology because you certainly can't be aware of what's happening on the desktop um, unless you bridge to the, to the desktop through an agent. On the other side of the coin, um, there is the, the emergence of virtualization in a massive way. And this is changing architectures and data centers. It's not only affecting the APM market on the edges, but it's impacting all the same vendors that build APM legacy tools because their operational monitoring tools are now in various states of disruption. So we're going to see a lot of changes between the new vendors and the traditional vendors, and this impacts what we're doing in APM as well. We see this now forming a trend where APM is really splitting into two distinct markets. The traditional market with the legacy tools, the legacy system monitoring, all that sort of stuff is really heavy application development and scripting build out. Uh, the newer segment is about, you know, application performance operations. We deal with major customers 
top pharmaceutical companies where they have built out an application performance and user performance operations group and this group is driven by the quarterly return to the organization of return on investment that is measured in the millions of dollars. We have customers that are using our tools wrapped around a practice like this and above and beyond the cost that they put into it they're clearing five to ten million dollars per year in hard operating benefits. So it's a new world out there and that's how the market is splitting to to uh, coincide with these capabilities. Automation is very, very important and uh, our customers today expect and demand out-of-the-box capability. The notion of scripting is a legacy notion and most customers really don't want to script transactions. If they want support for an application, they want it all there, every transaction, every screen, and every button. And that's the kind of capability that NOAA provides. But for most of the APM tools, it's actually not the case. You've got to go out and script and do the work. And sort of the future um, is the notion of cluster clustering mathematics, the idea that you can aggregate clusters and make decisions about how to set alert levels. This is particularly important for just raw performance-based measurements of infrastructure where you have so many things happening in a data center with APM tools that you're never sure how to set these thresholds. And if you've got enough data, then clustering will work well for you. So this is something to talk about later perhaps. Application performance management is defined with, with about five basic components. First, real-time monitoring of the components that constitute an application when they execute. Two, reporting on the hardware and software resources that are utilized as this happens. Three, report successful execution of the app or determine why it failed to execute. Four, report on the timing associated with the components of execution in their sequence. And five, report on why resource utilization and execution timings perhaps are, have departed from standard expectations and all these things tell you what you need to, do, to know to be more effective in running your data center and serving your customers. The use cases are a little bit different, right? The use cases are um, for the CIO, the dashboard is just invaluable. It's, it's beyond ROI. I need to know what's happening with my organization. And we'll talk more about how the CIO dashboard is changing dramatically based upon tools like UEM and uh, user initiatives like user performance management, but this is a big deal for the CIO. Um, there are many different testing activities going on, load testing, age testing, failover, soak testing, stress testing, and, and your, you know, your best gateway to seeing this from the thousand foot view accurately is to use APM tools that support your initiative. Triage. I have a problem and I need to really get inside to understand where it is. Root cause analysis. I, I, f I found it and now I've really got to dig into it and, and get this thing fixed and get my production operations back in business. Profiling is perhaps the greatest area for ROI and rather than have it happen because of an acute problem, um, many organizations follow a best practice which is to regularly profile components of their transaction execution and constantly tune that performance. You have ROI every time you cut a second off your average transaction performance. So you can profile and tune the performance of your infrastructure, your code, your networks, and your servers. And you can also do the same for your users, for your user performance. And this is the bridge that user experience management takes you to. Every second you take off either set, whether it's infrastructure or user, has huge ROI to the organization. And in fact, we believe that there's far greater return on investment to be found uh, in tuning the performance of that user and we'll, per we'll share some evidence to support that and um, uh, make you perhaps consider the same point of view. Service level agreements are just another area where APM tools are essential. Um, you're managing your vendors, you're managing and dealing with your internal customers users and even your external customers though usually represented by an internal uh, line of business. And service level agreements are constantly in contention uh, because people just don't agree over the measurements and the tools. And we'll talk about that a bit more. It's also the subject of another webinar we're doing because there's so much controversy in this area. So let's think about for APM tools, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? And let's, let's, let's see our opportunities for improvement and understand the good things that we have to leverage today. 
Application performance management tools have helped save billions in lost business productivity and it's no more nor less than being able to solve problems quickly, being able to diagnose them quickly, and by profiling and speeding the performance of applications. Every time you reduce that your team of people, your five or 10 or 20,000 users takes to execute standard business transactions, you are returning hard operating benefit to the bottom line. Um, today, we know that APM tools save billions. And as I said before, many of you wake up in the morning and you have a budget to buy an APM tool because you know these benefits implicitly, right? User experience management, whether you bundle it inside APM or you don't, most of these sales are done because you've created a return on investment case. Unless you're buying the very basic UEM as, as a diagnostic tool for a single transaction, um, the large enterprise suites like NOAA offers are usually ROI driven. So you wake up in the morning and you, you, you look at a business case to bring that technology in. But we submit again that, that the trend will be that the ROI is so compelling and strong and that the knowledge about the benefits of this will become so widespread that in five to ten years, yes, we will wake up and we will have budgets to buy our user experience management tool because the understanding of benefits are truly implicit for all of us. 70% of the potential ROI is in user experience management and UPM as opposed to all the other benefits that you can derive from the rest of the APM market. And uh, I'll share more about this with you later. But there's a huge opportunity here. And for your organization, it's probably untapped right now. In terms of the bad, we start to see more and more things about APM. Um, that disturb us. 10%, less than 10% of the core enterprise applications have their key transactions monitored by APM tools. We're missing a huge opportunity. Over 68% of the Fortune 500 companies in the US don't have a standard process for profiling and obtaining performance benefits on a regular basis. Profiling and the allocation of resources to this is one of the best ways to harvest return on investment day over day. You can constantly tune your application execution, and yet most companies aren't doing it. About 25% of the key managers in major uh, corporate enterprises are tied up about one week each month in crisis meetings just to resolve performance problems. And if this is perennial, it happens every day, every month, every year, crisis management over performance issues is de rigueur in most of our global organizations. Over 18% of the performance problems that you run into, that you're trying to solve, are repeats of problems that happened before. Either they weren't solved, they were memory leaks, you rebooted systems, you weren't sure what happened, and here they come back again. And actually the trend is increasing, which should be disturbing. The ugly really reaches deeper into the core issues we have with APM. Over 90% of all application performance problems are not resolved before they impact the users. And worse, over 65% of all application performance problems are not resolved before the users report them. Less than 40% of CIOs feel that a new application, despite all the testing, everything they've done, to understand what they need to do to put it in production. They still don't think it will perform to expectations and they feel worse about custom transactions. They, they know that the custom transactions that they built, that went through user acceptance testing that everyone thinks will work out great are in fact a greater source of problems than the standard transactions they get out of the box from their major vendors. 30% of performance problems we know from the user experience management world are actually caused by user behavior and an almost equal percentage, 25%, are in fact not real. They're, they're perception, but they're not real and we can see them and touch them and compare them to the performance everyone's getting. So all of this adds up to, as we, you know, we recall in the US from a famous space mission, when uh, one of the missions to the moon was having serious problems and the astronauts got online with mission control and said, Houston, we have a problem. And that became um, a, a watchword, a watch phrase for the subtle understatement of disastrous problem. Houston, we have a problem. And, and in many ways, that's the state of the industry today. Many users are frustrated 
Um, they're frustrated with architectural issues. Legacy APM does not mix with the cloud and the gaps that legacy vendors are building are just not working. There's a crop of new vendors available that will help sort this out, but fundamentally the architectures don't miss. If you really want to understand the full depth and breadth of something like user experience management, the only way to do it is at the desktop. It must be an agent on the desktop and it, it must be capable of understanding what's happening to that user at that workstation at that time. It's even more obvious and imperative when you go to the cloud. There are some schemes where people are deploying proprietary apps in the cloud and they're trying to measure from their server, but the fact fact is you've got so much executing on your desktop, so much happening there in the browser, and, and, and you, you need to understand what it's like for that user across the network delays they're experiencing. And the only way to do that is with an actual you know, agent on the desktop. Um, where and when do you measure and how do you measure? There's so many points you can measure. Now, let's be clear, you know, there are five segments to APM. Some of them have to measure every movement between a database, a, a, a JDBC call, an application server, um, and, and someone's use at the desktop. So you have to measure at multiple points across your infrastructure for, for the classic APM tools. For user experience management, it's obvious that you can measure in multiple places, simulated end users, robots, but you know we submit and insist that unless you're measuring the user experience at the desktop with an agent, you're, you're not getting the best accurate and certainly actionable data that will benefit you most. Um, the whole notion of robots, well, for basic user experience management, certainly it may be useful to wire a transaction across a network and see how that one performs and set up your simulated user. 99% of the vendors that sell APM tools, that sell a UEM tool are doing this. They're, they're capturing aggregate or average data from a server. They're putting a robot out there. That's fine. But if you really want to harvest the, you know, the strong ROI of a major use case and start to see your way towards the millions in savings that are possible, you, you need a different technology set. You must have an agent on the desktop. You must be able to know the state of every individual user. And without that, you can't harvest these incremental use cases, and we'll talk to that. Uh, we have videos that are recorded on our website that go through these use cases in detail, and I'd encourage you to register and see some of the on-demand video to learn more. Um, so that's where the action is. Finally, we hear from a lot of users that they've bought an APM tool or a UEM tool and it's just not scalable, it doesn't grow, it had great graphics, but you put more than you know, 300 things in it, it just stalls out. This happens a lot to people. I would say more than half of the tools out there could not possibly handle an organization with hundreds or thousands of servers and tens of thousands of users. So, you know, beware of the technology that you're trying to acquire. Frustrations go even deeper into the implementation side. Um, legacy scripting, while it's very comfortable for systems programmers and a lot of the folks um, in the organization, for many others, they just don't want to put up with the time investment. They don't want to script individual transactions. It's a lot of work. It's good for diagnosis, but it's not good if you want to get out of the box monitoring. SQL-like is often not SQL, so you're dealing with all sorts of proprietary languages. And these things are, you know, very legacy oriented. The newer technologies come out of the box. You push a button. It watches your transaction and sets it up, or it comes out of the box and it's all done for you. Every transaction, every screen, and every button, certainly the way we do it for user experience management. And, and that's the state of the market today. Um, people are tremendously frustrated with alert levels. Um, on the user performance side, we don't have huge, huge issues with that because we're usually working proactively to resolve issues that have huge economic impact on the raw performance uh, of transactions, whether through user experience or through some aggregate measurement, uh, most APM tools just don't tell you anything you need to know to set up alerts at the right levels, and we'll talk more about that. Um, I've talked to users that just to get their APM tools to work right, they can't correlate data, so they have to set up fake hosts and try to merge these data sets together. Um, I think that's completely nuts, but that's what some of you are doing today to get this stuff to work.
Alerts are the greatest source of frustration because people just don't know what to do with them. I can tell you that nothing serious will happen until a user calls to complain anyway. Um, and uh, we have a survey at the end of this webinar where we're going to gather data in this area. And I expect the results to correlate to this, that despite all of your APM alerts and all of your user experience management alerts, the reality is that uh, most of you are not doing a very proactive job, even with your alert system. In fact, the first uh, notice that you have a serious problem, two-thirds of the time, is probably coming from your users. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, the first best practice to consider is that the worst thing you can do is turn on a new system and set a threshold level based upon the past week's worth of data. We know from experience with APM tools, um, and our user experience management that corporate cycles are daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and sometimes annually. And you'll have huge variations based upon what exists in your infrastructure and the way it's used during the business cycle over those periods of time. So what's working for a week won't work well for a month. You may find the last week of that month you'll set off tons of alerts because your thresholds aren't the right thresholds. And so you're going to need a lot of data, and you're going to need to examine that data to set alerts the right way. This is why so many people want to move to automation, because this is a lot of work. The best example of how bad alerts are broken is for some of the legacy APM tools. They've got throttles on the alerts. So we're generating so many red blips that we don't want to send more than one every three minutes because we're overwhelming our operations team. Good grief. I mean, those alerts should be set up positively and effectively. They should be um, distributed at exactly the right doses, at exactly the right time. And, and there are even issues with false positives, right? So, so you have to think about, do I give it a window to correct? And, and so when you're in the data center with a pager, you're probably you know, better off at the ops console where you can see these things but when you've got you know 50 blinking red lights coming at you um, you're like a deer in the headlights you're sort of frozen and you're really not sure what you're dealing with and 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 these are all the issues with alerts the volume um, the accuracy the time-based uh, applicability and the extensive amount of work to set up and 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 so these are things you need to think about as you you pick your vendor and you decide how you're going to move forward Visualization is another area where you know people have lots of issues. Some of the products on the APM side, uh, I'm not talking about UEM now, but the more fundamental APM measurement components are, are gauge oriented for the ops center. They're red light, green light. Some of them have gauges. Some have both. Many of them are missing trending, which is very important. That's, the, that's perhaps your indication before things go wrong that something's happening. There's a degradation in an I.O. subsystem. There's a memory leak that's sprung in some new vendor application. Or there's some, some, some network uh, uh, failure uh, across some of your enterprise that's going to impact many of your operating entities. These are things you need to know. And the truth is you need all of these things. But many of you buy tools and only have a few of these things and you suffer for it. Trade-offs aren't always known up front. Many of you buy a lot of products. You'll maybe pick up some open source, and then you end up with results that you really didn't want. I have great visualization but lousy monitoring, and I have great monitoring and poor visualization. Hey, look, open source is okay, but you should be prepared to do a lot more work. I can't imagine for a large global enterprise, anybody with hundreds of users on a major app like SAP um, or anything like that, could really function too well with an open source product today. It's just not going to work for you. Um, the architecture scalability issue seems to be part of the problem. And for anybody other than a very small organization, much of the products out there are not built to scale. If you ask them, have you know, it's like if you ask us, have you deployed 70,000 users? You know, we can say yes. Uh, but most of the products out there haven't gone near those volumes of seats. Uh, have have not gone near thousands of servers and these are the kinds of things that you need to understand before you make your investment. Service level agreements I think 
today feel like to me talking to customers hand-to-hand -hand combat the user doesn't agree with the data reported by the the the, the parties um, that are responsible for it so if you've got an outside provider they tell you one thing you feel another you know um, and and it's really what counts to them in the segment that we address user experience management and bridging that to user performance management it's really what's on the desktop that counts I don't care what's on your server to me as a user it's the time from my hit the enter key to the time that I get a response on my desktop and that's the core of my infrastructure performance to me and if I'm having a problem with that performance you my support organization you need to take it upon yourself to look at all the pieces of that performance and you need to be responsible for it um, if you've ex if you've taken that responsibility already but but I don't want to hear that it looks like the response time is two seconds because if the response time on my desktop is 10 seconds that's what counts um, the, the components in APM today that measure are just adequate enough to measure vendors, but just adequate enough. And they're just adequate enough for tools like the hardware and the platform. But it's not adequate for your internal users. You need to measure at the desktop for the user. And as you bridge to high-end UEM products, you start to get to user performance management, which which as I said before 99 percent of the vendors do not address and to really manage and measure and understand user performance management you know you're going to need to be on the desktop you're going to need to have um, the right kind of orientation to do it so there's a lot to think about here UEM is by far the best tool for establishing service level agreements with your users in an organization and our UEM coupled with our UPM features the way SAP UEM by NOAA sold by SAP is the best balance it shows line of business and IT together in partnership where all the holes are here we'll see that 60 percent of our problems respectfully submitted were caused by users having problems implementing the technology and 40 percent were caused by the technology itself and it's all there for you to see system error user error so it's really the right way to go for service level agreement. APM frustrations also extend to the IT service desk and if you netted all of this out right you really need to think about how all of these pieces come together for true value realization for you and your internal customers the best way to show this is by example and it's how all the data from your APM tools your UEM tools your your here and bug reporting and your service desk all come together in one view of the enterprise service 10 which is what's in 99 percent of the organizations out there today is as of this moment I've got 1200 calls today in my remedy system I know about 40 percent will be user error our APM tools and our ops console are showing we've got maybe 40 alerts today and, and two or three are serious issues and one of them we think is is correlating to maybe 30 of the calls in our remedy system and beyond that we really don't know anything else about the state of the enterprise service 2.0 is a very different place this is the place where SAP has had the vision to use tools like SAP UEM by NOAA and to extend that vision to the market and to their customers and this is where that vision is taking SAP and their customers today in my enterprise I have had 1200 errors in my remedy system but I know from SAP UEM that there are actually 11,000 errors which are a combination of system user and actually uh, uh, master data errors and I know that only one in nine of these errors are reported and I can correlate the the alerts from my other APM tools in my ops console back to the remedy system back to the SAP UEM system and see all of this in one analytics framework and I can see every user whether they've reported anything or not whether they're being impacted or not and the state of their specific performance on their desktop and that's really the state of the union now where some of the visionary customers are going past service 2.0 um, is also being bridged by SAP we have one very visionary customer called McKesson where that CIO can look out in the morning and he can see today that 
because I know there's 11,000 errors and 1,200 reported, I can see the impact economically of the downtime of the system errors and the user errors, reported or not. I can see who they were. I can see how much time they lost unable to complete those transactions because they were suffering with errors. And I can see the economic value this morning globally in my SAP world it was I lost $42,000 in productivity because I can measure that downtime. I can see the impact. And now I can prioritize where I'm going to be proactive in either profiling my system performance or profiling my user performance. And they have a user performance management team that's regularly harvesting you know, millions of dollars with this kind of proactivity and that's really service 3.0 and that's the vision for the market and that's the kind of thing that you can do with SAP UEM by NOAA um, and some of your other major infrastructure tools but SAP really is driving this vision to the market and really uniquely can present this capability for your organization so it's something you really want to know more about. Other APM frustrations are just wrapped around all of the configuration and setup. We talked about alerts. Um, it's, it's worse than that. It's just so many proprietary languages, so many menus, so many difficult things. The biggest complaint I get, if you really know this market, you really know these tools, it's one thing to read about them. It's another to use them, right? And uh, in my past lives, I had a development team of small one of 45 programmers, and we built products that were deployed in you know major banks and telcos. And you'd have to set this stuff up twice. I mean, it was just just a nightmare. And, you know, everybody did it, but there are new technologies. There is a better way. And this is a major frustration for users. This is one of my pet peeves here, which is um, flying blind. I can't believe that anyone would pick up a set of APM tools and still not be able to monitor a transaction from end to end. You need to have visualization to the application tier. You need, I think, a graphics dash for the raw APM application performance management that shows you here's where it was on the desktop, here's where it went, you know, through the network to the JDBC component and 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 the time it spent in each place. And then it went to the application server and that made a call to MySQL and then it made a call to an Oracle database and you need to see each of the time chunks and then in places like the application server you need to be able to drill down into the app with other tools to see the execution. You cannot do efficient root cause analysis without 100% visibility. Now we're in the user experience management segment. We're on the desktop. We're looking at the performance the user sees and we're really instrumenting the user for UPM to drive value. Um, on the other side of the fence my brethren are suffering with this problem and you know one out of three of you just don't have the right tool set. So you get a whole bunch of people in a room. You talk about it then everybody goes off and digs through all sorts of stuff to try to figure it out. There is a better way. Um, there are some nice tools out there. And uh, I, you know, I think all of the analysts out there would strongly recommend that, you know, you have a visualization tool that lets you see this stuff, you know, when you're when you're really measuring the guts of the application execution and the flow through the networks. Um, in terms of other best practice, you know, you should be profiling everything with APM. And if we include our UEM in that definition, you know, you, you want to instrument the performance of every user. You want to know at the desktop what every user is experiencing. And if you do this, the ROI for you is millions of, you know, I have dollars there, but you can insert your currency also. It's going to be very, very good for you. In terms of profiling, um, we want you to go broad, right? That's that's really the key is to cover all of your mainstream apps. And for alerts, you've really got to understand periodicity over time. You've got to know by the day, by the week, by the month, by the quarter, what are my business cycles before you set up any alerts. And if you don't do that, uh, you're going to be um, you know, in alert disaster mode with fire drills. And you may get to the end of the quarter and figure this out, but by then your CIO will be pretty aggravated with you and, and, may, and may have already judged your performance on implementation. So beware. The pros know this, but you know, you've got to have big chunks of data to set these up right. 
Baseline transaction visibility by infrastructure tier is essential for the uh, core APM measurement tools. You've got to see the pieces. You've got to drill down. We do this on the user experience management side. And certainly for user performance, you know, we know everything there is to know. And, and that's essential for you. Um, don't expect your legacy vendors to handle cloud. Get a new product. Uh, I had a cartoon here for uh, perhaps a less serious audience, and it was a picture of a, a, a pig. And it said, don't try to teach a pig to fly. You know, it frustrates the pig and it, it upsets you, right? I mean, these legacy products were well designed uh, for what they have to do. They are old school. They're heavily scripted. And, you know, now if you're going to cloud, don't buy some cobbled add-on. Just, just take the time, get some new technology, bring it in. And that's the right move. For major enterprise applications, you know, whereas we went broad with APM, you know, we, we picked our targets of opportunity. For user experience management and for the bridge to user performance management, you really want to go deep. You want an app that comes out of the box that covers every transaction. So when we cover with SAP UEM by NOAA, um, we cover SAP deep. We have CRM. We have instrumenting business objects, everything in GUI and NetWeaver portal uh, that most customers want, HR, financials, ERP. And, and you don't have to script a single transaction. It comes out of the box all done. And that's what going deep means. So instead of you having to say, hey, I think this transaction isn't right. Let's see what's happening with my user execution. Let's take my basic UEM tool and script it. With our capabilities for UEM, we look at everything and then our analytics frames it back to you and says, here's the opportunity we discovered to save money and impact performance and proactively avoid disturbance to your operations. That's the way to go. For UEM and the bridge to UPM, go deep. But for APM, you should go broad as quickly as you can because you're missing opportunities in both places. If you do these things, the ROI for your organization is huge. You know, you've got the right alert at the right time for the right problem. But, you know, for most of you, there's a new horizon that you, you just haven't touched yet. Um, that horizon is just like basic APM was 10 years ago, and it presents the same opportunity. As I said before, you know, you're not waking up in the morning with these budgets. You're having to drive them by ROI, but they're just as compelling and just as impressive um, and, and so this is the opportunity for user experience management. User experience management, we believe, is so compelling that we think it's an implement first technology. Um, you know, you've instrumented so many pieces of your network, your storage and your actual application. You know, you virtualized it and made it redundant and wrapped it in RAID, but you know so little about your user. And user experience management starts by measuring the performance of all that network, storage, processor, and app at that desktop, but can take you a step further to building out a true enterprise performance team because now you can not only have user experience management or measurement of the infrastructure there, but measurement of the user's performance and proficiency. And this brings you to new incremental business cases that are massive and this is the opportunity for every one of you out there that's a professional in the performance measurement space from a opportunity perspective you can bridge to something which can bring your organization millions in savings there are consultancies you can talk to that know about this small boutique consultancies with tremendous capabilities like the people that were at McKesson that did a lot of the work there they're called slide 13 or you can talk to our professional services team but but this is an area with huge potential return on investment for you another way to look at it is to consider all the stuff we just talked about all of these APM tools plug into this infrastructure, right? We've got it wrapped and, and measured and wired. We've, we're, we're after the desktop. And, and there's a million other products that measure every line of code execution. And user experience management now takes you up a level. And you're looking at the effectiveness of people and the effectiveness of your human capital. And it is exactly part of the same problem. 
you know it's myopic to say well look I just need a tool to diagnose when a piece of code is breaking um, you're, you're ultimately part of the effort to optimize the performance of your business and you need to think big you need to think about the fact that you could do so much more and you can bring huge value to your enterprise so so true performance management is about the application and the infrastructure and about the user it's a new way of thinking it's why UEM and UPM are probably going to break out into a new market segment and we believe if if APM is 2 billion today we believe based upon the ROI driven model that UEM and UPM can stand alone as a market that can be 2 or 3 billion you know years from now 5 6 7 8 years from now that's how big and compelling it is in terms of return on investment value a way to view this is just ask your CIO ask yourselves today how many user errors did I have? How many system errors did I have? Everybody can answer the question about system errors somewhere. They've got remedy. They've got some APM tools. They've got a lot of smart people in the data center. But the question highlights the fact that you really don't know about your user errors. You don't know. And as you fix them, that's the greatest source of value. Most CIOs are surprised to see this metric. We know this from instrumenting our early customers as we go in the door on average and we find levels of implementation that suggest these numbers roughly 90 percent of all the problems are user errors and only one in nine gets reported to the help desk and this is a huge area to drive value by by quantifying these seeing them in the analytics dashboards and then attacking these problems um, you're not you're not aware your CIO is not aware of most of these problems right and and that's why it's such a huge opportunity when you go to a product like SAP UEM and you start to build out the CIO dashboards that show you now the bigger picture of what you don't know and then start to bridge to the economic value the really visionary look um, you're on the cusp of harvesting millions and millions of ROI for your organization for a major global organization you should expect tens of millions to hundreds of millions in value that you can harvest by understanding things like user productivity so this is this is a huge ROI driven incentive and and it's all wrapped around a lot of this key data uh, one of the the studies that I love just came out of a very small analyst firm called IdealNet and I love it because they actually took the time to segment user experience management this is huge this study is was done for the life sciences market where they have domain knowledge and you can register and get a free copy of their white paper or hear their CEO's webinar from a week or two ago either one by going through our website and registering but this is really really good stuff on UEM none of the big analysts are covering it this way because um, you know they're, they're just covering the space as standalone and some of the biggest really see it as part of APM it's just another tool focused on the measurement of infrastructure performance so most analysts don't see the top of the pyramid um, the biggest really only cover the bottom but here, here's where it is at basic UEM you know you have the ability to instrument a transaction to a desktop and that can be a robot that can be a real user that can be simulated um, sometimes it's server sniffed and averaged but you're making an attempt to measure with UEM performance as the user would see it at the desktop that's good but it, it's it's not specific to that user most of the time and for all the vendors that you deal with that are selling APM tools that have a UEM module that's what it is it's very primitive now don't get me wrong we are delivering and driving value from it right that is an APM like tool that delivers value but you're you're checking on the performance of a specific transaction or two and that's what's happening the next tier up that IdealNet identified is advanced UEM and they said here look that that at least you can for those apps measure performance at the desktop and now we know specific to the desktop the user maybe through LDAP or the IP address but we know desktop by desktop exactly what performance they're seeing and let me tell you when you go from the bulk of vendors at basic UEM to advanced UEM um, you know less than one in ten is doing it this way there's just a very few 
where NOAA is, and certainly SAP UEM by NOAA, as SAP has built out the product set, is is really at the top of the pyramid. They are bridging from enterprise UEM into user performance management. And because of this, they are positioning to drive just tons of value against massive use cases uh, and, and return on investment. Um, our ability to optimize the performance of the help desk is huge. Not only do we know when you call the help desk what kind of a problem you had. We know if it was a system error. We know if it was a user error. We can see compacted workflow from the user experience and know exactly what you did to recreate the problem. The reduction in the time you spend on that call, the reduction in the number of calls, and the reduction in functional support at level two and level three is huge. We can pretty much walk into, you know, SAP can walk into any major global account and probably say comfortably, we can reduce your IT service and functional support cost 10 to 20%, and we can still do it if you outsource. Because the proactive data, your ability to find all of the transactions with huge volumes of user error and proactively profile them and then resolve them will reduce the traffic even to your outsourced service substantially. I am dealing with customers that are saving millions of dollars just doing that. And there, there are other use cases in education and training. Um, you know, the CIO dash is very compelling. Uh, others, we talk about application development, change management, and user acceptance testing. Uh, for change management, it's very, very compelling to know the state of user error right before you roll out a release and then right after. And to know objectively how did your UAT happen, what really happened you know, when we, we tested all these custom transactions. So this is a very, very big deal. This is the first segmentation of the UEM market space. There'll be more, they'll probably be different, but I think what you're seeing here is the bridge to UPM, and you should know that of all the vendors out there, SAP has by far the most complete vision, the best delivery, and SAP UEM by NOAA is proudly part of that family of products that they bring to market. They also have a wonderful basic UEM product that a lot of customers use called EEM, so they have everything you need. If you want to know more about SAP, you can talk to their educational team, uh, their top notch, or your account exec or your global account director. Uh, your client partner will also be a good source of information on SAP UEM by NOAA. Uh, we have customers around the world very successful with our technology and I thought I'd just mention one um, from our Oracle world which is British Telecom and the point here is to show that here's a customer that is having an annual recurring benefit of one and a half million pounds because they implemented this technology with Siebel and uh, it, this, is, this is a big deal when you have a fully capable UEM product and you can bridge the gap to UPM performance. Um, IdealNet, uh, the company that did this study, uh, said some wonderful things about us and I wanted to share with you their point that I think the automation is 100% and it comes out of the box and because of this we can enable you know use cases that you cannot get from basic UEM tools and this is a big deal I think to our customers. Uh, as I said before, SAP UEM is a flagship product. Uh, SAP is a visionary in the market. They're changing the face of service. They're deploying this into many use cases. And the product set is very comprehensive. Their experience in delivering this globally is without peer. They have the finest product in the market and they have more experience doing this than anyone. Uh, we are dealing with customers around the world. Uh, South America, major oil companies like Petrobras, um, in Canada, major companies, uh, uh, supermarket retail chains like Loblaws, uh, major consumer products companies like Kraft Foods in the United States, and, and certainly McKesson, a visionary in terms of where you can go with APM, user experience management, UPM, and really the whole notion of corporate performance management. So. SAP has more experience at this than anyone and this would be a great place for you to start if SAP is part of your world today. We're also dealing with customers switching from other products like in, in one case Oracle Financials to SAP and, and this technology is a great safety blanket to bring you over that line 
uh, in the least volatile way to make change management you know less exciting than it is most of the time so I would encourage you strongly to talk to your SAP team but this is a great go-to-market uh, UEM capability uh, I think it's deja vu all over again I think that what you went through with basic APM 10 years ago you built your first use cases and you said wow this is great stuff it's gonna save me all this money and then you bought the product today you wake up and you have a budget for APM diagnostic tools I think it's going to be the same with user experience management and user performance management I think the market will develop faster I think the ROI is much greater and I think you're going to see these kinds of benefits which came from one particular customers actual implementation study they're looking at annual benefits de minimis of a million and a half US per year and their cost of the product was far less um, you know so so this is a big internal rate of return and a nice ROI and if you're a major user for technology out there this is what you should expect from UEM and UPM capability I'd like to acknowledge trademarks from many fine vendors including SAP Oracle and others and uh, you can see these trademark acknowledgments on our website